Hi, welcome to a structural vignette tutorial. Here's a solved solution I've come up with. I'll show you how to solve this and explain the tools and any programmatic issues you should be concerned with. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit start over. Oh, actually, you know, before I do that, let me just describe what you're seeing here. You're looking at these green lines here are beams, the red lines are joists, and the uh, the arrow pointing from one end to the other re represents a span of a uh, decking and as well as the yellow portion. Uh, the grayed area up is at the level above and uh, again here the green is the beams, the red is the joists and this represents the deck. The black rectangles or squares are actually columns. Okay, let's, I'm going to hit spacebar here and I'm going to go to the program. I'm going to point out a couple important uh, programmatic issues in this vignette. First thing you need to know is look at what your uh, maximum span on your deck is. It says it's four feet. So that's really important. Remember that. Deck is capable of carrying design loads on spans up to including four feet. So that means all uh, of your joists are going to be at 48 inch centers. Um, other things that are important. Uh, you need to remember that there's a high area typically to the design and a low area to design. So look at that. Um, also uh, that, um, what else here? There, there's typically a clear story window and there's typically a window wall and you need to keep those uh, in mind as far as uh, where bearing walls are going to be. So I'll describe that a little bit more as we do this design. It says here that the clear story is going to be on the north wall, the common area, and the window wall is actually labeled here. So this would be the clear story. Okay, let's hit start over. We'll go ahead and start this from scratch. Okay, typically what I do first is I figure out, okay, what do they want? Well, this and this one, the program requires that you do a two... Um, two level high or a uh, high area in this common so it's uh, you know like 18 feet and the rest is 9 feet or 10 feet in height something like that and so that means if we go to our layers and go to our upper let's go ahead and just put our upper layer in first and we know that we're gonna since cantilevers are prohibited according to the program we'll have to support the four corners so drop in a column in the four corners we also know that um, beams, well, we don't know this, but now you know this, beams um, can span, between, should span between 20 and 40 feet. So I'm spacing supports so that we're not exceeding a uh, maximum of 40 feet. So let's go ahead and draw a beam in and, and check that. Uh, hit the beam and lintel tool, and I'm going to click from center of column to center of column and I'm not going to click yet here but you can see it's 36 foot 8 okay so that's less than 40 so that works for a span I'm going to go ahead and make this beam continuous you're allowed to do that it reduces your amount of clicks I recommend everybody do that okay so now we have essentially one beam that spans between 20 and 40 feet this one right here is um, is uh, less than 40 and this one's a little bit less than 20 but there's no other alternative as far as breaking it. We could break it here, but it'd make that span even smaller and less efficient. So this is the most efficient layout, keeping a beam under 40, um, under 40 feet. Okay, let's go ahead and draw in our other beam. And here we had some options as well. Um, we potentially, you know, you could you could break it here, you could break it here, you could break it here, anywhere in there. Uh, but the problem is you on the lower level we'll need to support that corner so it makes the most sense to actually break that that span in this location right here that way that column can do double work okay so 16 feet not not too bad a span we can work with that and 52 so 16 minus 52 is less than 40 so we are set there I'm gonna go ahead and click okay let's just just make sure we place everything in properly let's just do a little bit of quick zoom in, in and making sure our columns and our our beams are placed nice and accurately using the zoom tool. Okay, things look good. Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to do our joists. Now joists always run perpendicular to our beams. So we'll select the north-south joist tool and remember I said they should be spaced at 40 cent, 48 inches on center. So 
click from the middle of, once you've selected that 48 inch uh, center joist, click from the middle of the uh, column on one side to the middle of the column on the other side. And you can see they're running perpendicular to the green line or the beam. Finally, let's put in our decking, and our decking needs to run perpendicular to the joist. So I'll drop those in again, do middle of column to middle of column, and drop it in. Okay, so now our upper level is complete. So you can see we've got columns, beams, and joists. And our joists, uh, the trick to joists is they need to uh, be uh, less than 30 feet in length. And so this uh, joist is less than 30 feet, and so it's a, um, it's a efficient joist. Alright, let's hit the layer tool and we'll click on lower and we don't wanna we want we let's go ahead and look at the other layer just so we can there you can you can click this if you want the other layer to disappear you can click that but let's let's keep it on so we place our columns accurately and such. Okay, so we need to actually put a column below uh the upper la level column. It's kinda weird they make you support a column with a, a column. Uh, if I was doing this in real life I'd think of it as a single column spanning two levels but that's not the way it works here. Okay, So I've got my my columns in. Now we want to think about the most efficient lower level um, structural uh, layout. Well let's see we've got spans coming in this direction there's a column here, there's a column here seems to, this is less than 30 feet from here to here so that seems to be a pretty good way to break it up is to just make this area right here have the have the joist span in this direction so let's go ahead and do that in order to make that work we're going to need to put a beam here to support joists and a beam along this wall to support joists and then let's go ahead and draw our joists in and again at 48 inch centers according to the program and from center of column to center of column and then let's put in our decking and decking goes again perpendicular to the joist okay that's in alright now let's think about the rest of it um, this is less than 30 feet in this direction we've already got a beam here makes sense to just put a beam there because that way this beam can do double double work Let's do that. Drop a column here to support one, the other half of that beam on the opposite side. And you know what? Let's just make that beam go all the way across because I'm thinking that we'll probably just want beams here and have decks or our joists spanning that direction. It seems to make the most sense. So let's put our joists in. Again, those are going to be at 48 inch centers and they're going to run from center of column to center of column and then we're going to need some decking and that's going to be running perpendicular to joists okay perfect okay lastly let's put in some columns well so how else could we break this you know we we didn't necessarily need to have uh... that that beam right here extend all the way out but it seems to make some sense because we needed to um, have columns here anyway. Well, I guess we could have put a column here and here. Oops. Adjust that a bit. And then we could draw, oh, I don't know, maybe we could draw a beam in this direction and a beam. This is a big what if. I, I don't think actually this is the way to do it, but this is just another possible way of looking at it. And then we could adjust this so that that it stopped there, but then we don't have as as much uh, of an efficient layout in my mind because now now we've got this extra beam that doesn't do double work. So okay, let me let me just finish up that idea just so you can see beamer beamer lintel running like here, and then we draw our joists uh, in this direction. Let's do it 48 inch. And so these are spanning 36.8, which is a little bit more than the 30 feet that's allowed. So another reason why not to do it. 
and then this would span 30 foot 4 so that'd be about right there okay so basically the reason I wouldn't do this solution is because this beam right here is not doing uh, double work like it could it could be a little more efficient so let's erase what I just put in there I'm gonna hit the erase tool hit erase again hit the, hit the, oops, hit the erase tool hit erase hit the erase tool let's, let's see if we can hit it a couple times and there we are okay hit erase yeah, erase tool is more uh, effective if you hit multiple items before you hit erase again. Okay, beam. Let's go ahead and do what I initially thought the concept should be. Let's draw a beam all the way across there. And let's move a beam all the way across here. And now just run the joist perpendicular to those beams at 48 inch centers. And draw the decking in perpendicular to the joists. Okay, now I think that's a pretty good solution. We've got spans on the beams less than 30. We've got a slightly short, well, quite a bit short joist span, but I think it's probably the best way of going about things in this particular instance. And we're covering all of our corners. There's no cantilevers occurring. Seems to be a pretty good structural solution. Alright, I'll see you on the next video.